Hi guys, in this video I'm going to discuss understanding the economic incidence of a tax, so how the total tax burden in a market is distributed or split between our producers and our consumers. So basically we're asking when we tax a market, who of our market players, so our consumers or our producers, are paying for what proportion of the total tax revenue that's collected. So to start, I'm just going to quickly apply a tax in perfect competition, just really quickly so everyone is on the same page in terms of understanding how taxes work. You can definitely skip this part if you're really comfortable with tax theory. So let's imagine that we're in equilibrium and we get price P star and Q star. Let's impose a tax of T dollars per unit on the producers. We are going to call this an ad valorem tax. So the producers now, after they trade with the consumer in the market, they have to go and give T dollars per unit to the government. This is going to cause our supply curve to shift up like this, shifting the supply curve up by exactly the amount of the tax. Our new equilibrium point will be at the intersection of our old demand curve and our new supply curve. That's going to give us the new price that is paid by the consumers for each unit. We can call that P prime. It will also give us the new quantity traded in the market, which is Q prime. Now we must remember here that our producers still need to give T dollars per unit to the government. So although initially they trade with the consumers and they get price P prime, the actual price that the producers get per unit is going to be P prime minus T. And so let's call that P prime prime and that's going to be the producer's price per unit. Graphically, our tax and the resulting prices look something like this. Good, so I went through that quickly. I will link to another video that I've done on taxes before, just in the description below, if that was too fast for you. The important thing for this video is that we all understand all of these prices here. We have the initial price, that's P star. So before the tax, the producer gets P star per unit and the consumers pay P star per unit. After the tax, our consumers pay a higher price here, that's P prime and the producers now get a lower price, P prime prime. When we talk about economic incidence of a tax, what we're going to do is essentially figure out by how much the price per unit has risen for the customers and how much the price per unit has dropped for the producers as a result of the introduction of the tax. This is going to tell us how the total burden of the tax is divided between our producers and our consumers. And actually the thing that matters here is the relative elasticities between our buyers and sellers. So with that in mind, let's compare these three graphs here. In the first diagram here, I've essentially just copied the graph that I just went through with you before. You can see that neither my demand or supply is especially steep or flat relative to one another. So actually in this first diagram, I can't really tell which side of the market is more inelastic. And we can see that the price increase for the consumers, that's the difference between P star and P prime, that looks about the same as the decrease in the price that the producers have experienced, that is the difference between P star and P prime prime. Let's compare this to our second diagram where my demand curve is really very steep. And so when our demand curve is steep in this way, we say that it is quite an inelastic curve. You can see here that P prime that's the price that the consumers pay for the good after the tax, is a lot higher than P star. So the consumers are paying a lot more than they used to. P prime prime, that's our producer's price per unit after the tax, is only slightly less than the price that they received prior to the tax. So we see this inequality in the way in which our prices have changed after the tax between our producers and our consumers. And what we're going to say here is that the consumers are bearing more of the burden of the tax. The price per unit has gone up a lot more when we compare it to how the producers are faring. And this actually gestures towards a more general result. When we think about the incidence of the tax, the tax burden will fall more heavily on the more inelastic side of the market. We can see our incidence another way by looking at our total tax revenue. So our total tax revenue is equal to Q prime, the amount that is traded in the market, multiplied by the tax amount T. And it's actually this purple square here. You can see the height of this rectangle is equal to T and the width is equal to Q prime. So the area will be Q prime times T, our tax rate. So it's equal to our total tax revenue. Now you can see that we can divide this total amount of tax into two parts. The amount of tax that consumers pay, which is going to be the price increase they bear, multiplied by the number of units they buy Q prime. 
and also the amount of tax that the producers pay, which is going to be measured as the decrease in the price that the producers suffer as a result of the tax, multiplied by the amount that they produce Q prime. So you can see here the consumers here, they're the more inelastic side of the market and they're paying a larger proportion of the total tax revenue. The third diagram here shows the opposite situation. We have a very elastic demand curve. And so what's going to happen is that our supply will be relatively the more inelastic side of the market. Looking at our prices here, we can see that the consumer is not paying much more than they did originally, but the producer, this is now our more inelastic side of the market, they're getting a lot less. So P prime prime is a lot less than P star. If we look at our total tax revenue, and we see how this is divided up between the two parties, we can confirm that indeed, our tax burden has fallen more heavily on the inelastic side of the market. Intuitively, the more inelastic side of the market ends up paying more of the tax because it is relatively less able to change its behavior given price changes. It's important to note in my diagrams here, I have manipulated the relative elasticities by changing the slope of our demand curve. I chose to concentrate on demand here because it's quite easy, but I didn't have to do this. I can also think about changing up the supply curve, making it really elastic or inelastic. And in these diagrams here, for instance, we can see that, but our rule still applies. The economic burden is borne more heavily on the inelastic side of the market. Lastly, a really important lesson here concerns the legal responsibility of the tax. In terms of economic incidence, the only thing that matters here is relative elasticity. Whilst my example shows a tax imposed on the sellers, we would get identical results in terms of economic outcomes if I had imposed the tax on the buyers. In another video, what I'm going to do is show a tax on sellers just side to side with a tax on buyers with you know, exactly the same curves to show you guys just this point. When I do that video, I'll link to it in the description below and you can guys can check that out. Okay, good. I hope that helped. I hope you understand uh, the incidence of tax a little bit, bit better. Maybe hopefully you're more confident with this. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Uh, so good to have you look at my videos. Hope you're having a good day.